Hey. If you're watching this because you have to, I'm sorry. If you're watching this because you chose to, thank you. Either way, I hope that the next few minutes aren't entirely uninteresting for you. We'll be talking about the Dutch painter Paulus Potter, who he was, where he came from, where he went, what he did, and who he knew. But more specifically, we'll be talking about his horse portrait, the piebald horse, and why it's important in both art and war history. Potter was born in 1625 in the modern-day Netherlands. Unfortunately, Potter died at age 28 of tuberculosis, so there isn't much biographical information to be found. What we do know is that Paulus came from a family of artists. His father, Peter Potter, was a practicing painter, and his mother was the sister of famous painter Willem Bartsius. It isn't completely clear how Potter became so interested in animals. We do know that he studied under famous physician Nicolas Tulp, where he may have become interested in anatomy. The piebald horse was painted sometime between 1650 and 1654. It's relatively small, about 20 by 18 inches, and was most likely commissioned as a portrait by the owner. It's important because most often when a horse is featured, there's a human on top who's the center of attention. But Potter changed that by doing what the U.S. National Gallery of Art calls featuring animals as subjects in their own right. Potter contrasted the way he used light and shadow to make the background look almost completely flat, while the horse is well-defined and three-dimensional. The horse also looks huge, towering above its landscape with its head in the clouds. While the piebald horse is considered one of Potter's finest paintings, it isn't his most popular. That award goes to the Young Bull. The massive 8 by 11 foot oil painting features similar characteristics to the piebald horse. It was completed in 1647 when Potter was just 22 years old. The painting changed hands frequently, bouncing between the Netherlands, France, and Britain for over 200 years. In 1910, it came into the hands of Adolf Schloss, a French art collector, and remained in his family until 1943. In 1943, the Vichy government of France, occupied by the German military, acquired the piece and put it in the Louvre Museum. After the war, the piece was given back to the Schloss family and sold to Getty. It can now be found in the Getty Museum in Los Angeles. That's all, folks. I hope you feel slightly more educated about the history of art and war and how they relate. And thanks for watching.